about uh, i'm going to talk about um, um a overview of uh, jet physics and especially i will focus on uh, jet energy loss in core gluon plasma um, in high energy and high virtuality phase uh, so let me start with uh, introduction um so here i'm i have um picture showing um production of high pt hadrons and high pt jets in um proton proton collision and here i have um in heavy ion collisions and here uh, pt means the uh, transverse momentum of the uh, leading hadron or jets uh, that is transverse to the beam direction so in 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 these collision the uh, main um, process that generates uh, these high pt hadrons or jets is the initial state um, hard scattering um, and which is shown in 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 in, in this diagram here where one part on from one of the um, um, proton here and the part on from proton here undergoes hard scattering and then it um, goes uh, final state radiation. Um, and these partons, they radiate in, in, in a collinear uh, fashion. And that's uh, give a origin of a collimated spray uh, of soft and hard hadrons that are detected in, um, in, in the detector. And we call these uh, collimated spray of soft hadrons, uh, soft and hard hadrons um, as jets. And uh, measuring these uh, jets essentially give us um, information about the parton that was produced in, in, in the hard scattering. Um, to calculate uh, these hard processes, one relies on um, perturbative uh, QCD. Um, and it, it, it can be used uh, in high precision to calculate to um, a, a high uh, accuracy. Um, in order to uh, um, um, find out the property of a core gluon plasma, one measures the yield of these uh, leading hadrons or um, these high PT jets in heavy ion collision. And then one measures them, um, compares them in proton-proton collision. And then um, their modifications essentially tells us uh, the property of the core gluon plasma. So in this regard, one famous uh, observable that is used um, in, in, in calculation is called uh, nuclear modification factor RAA which is essentially a ratio of uh, yield of um, leading hadrons that are produced in um, nucleus nucleus collision and divided by the yield of leading hadrons that are produced in proton proton collision. And one scales this by number of binary collisions um, that are uh, in, in nucleus nucleus collision. Um, this particular uh, observable have been measured um, in experiments and is also calculated in theory um, to uh, understand the detailed mechanism of um, part on energy loss. So here I'm showing the uh, experimental data of um, RA for final state um, particles. Um, in the black uh, dots here, black and the blue dots, they are the uh, RA for charged particles, um, final state charged particles that are produced. And open symbol here are uh, RA of isolated photons. And one can see that the RA of charged particles is smaller than one. So that means that um, uh, there is a quenching um, of these particles in, in the core gluon plasma whereas isolated photons, which are electromagnetic probe, and they don't interact with the core gluon plasma, um, their RA is uh, consistent with unity. So this essentially shows that the core gluon plasma that is produced 
uh, it's uh, strongly interacting. Um, these observables are calculated um, in, in theory using um, a factorization theorem. Um, so what factorization essentially means is that one can separate a short distance physics uh, from the long distance physics. We have soft uh, distance physics is essentially uh, the hard scattering that happens uh, in, in these collisions. Uh, it's very um, um, uh, essentially related to the, the hard scale Q square that is exchanged in, in, um, between these partons. And long distance physics essentially um, corresponds to the partons um, that come out from these uh, nucleons and also the fragmentation of these partons um, that have uh, fragmentation of these partons into hadron. Um, so the factorization theorem essentially um, is writ uh, written in, in this following form, which is um, that the total cross section to produce a high PT hadron or high PT jet can essentially be written in terms of product of probabilities. So here I have um, each of these blob represents probability. Uh, this blue blob represents the um, uh, parton distribution functions for um, the, the parton to come out with certain momentum fraction xA. Uh, of the uh, uh, of the total momentum of the nucleon, and x b is also the momentum fraction of this uh, parton uh, related to the nucleon here. Um, and this red blob here represents the um, uh, differential um, scattering cross section between these two partons, and the exchanged uh, invariant mass of this exchanged blue on uh, essentially sets the hard scale, which is Q squared denoted here. Um, and then this part on finally undergoes um, um, radiation and um, uh, scattering with the medium and then fragments uh, into hadron and is represented by a medium modified fragmentation function uh, D tilde here. And if one is measuring at the um, yield of the jets, then one um, look at quantity called jet fragmentation function. Uh, this uh, factorization uh, in terms of probabilities has been proven for proton-proton collision. And one assumes that it is true for uh, heavy ion collisions. So um, in this particular uh, equation, these uh, part on distribution functions and uh, the fragmentation function, both are non-perturbative phenomena and they, they depend on the scale Q square. So let's first, uh, let me talk about um, the part on distribution function. Um, in, in this uh, picture here, I'm showing a deep inelastic collision uh, where the uh, electron is the projectile um, and going through proton. So um, the interaction between electron and proton uh, is happening here uh, by exchange of photon and its invariant mass is Q square. And as one increases Q square, uh, uh, in, as the Q square increases in the process, um, the electron can resolve a short distance structure in, in, inside the proton. Um, and this is essentially a, a reason for uh, Q square evolution of the part on PDF. Um, so here I have uh, momentum fraction X for the struck part on uh, in, in, in proton is given as the Q square divided by two times mass of the proton and the energy of the electron uh, in the rest frame of proton. Um, this has been quantified in terms of um, uh, part on distribution function uh, measured uh, in experiment by H1 and U's uh, collaboration. Uh, and shown here is a X times F um, plotted as a momentum fraction X um, for 
uh, resolution scale Q square 1.9 and here uh, resolution scale is increased to Q square equal to 10. And in this plot, uh, one can focus on, uh, let's say the gluon uh, distribution function shown here that uh, as one increases Q square, one can see that the gluon distributions uh, increases significantly at, at pro x. And this, this means that the proton structure is a scale dependent phenomena and that this is the main uh, reason for the scale evolution of pardon distribution function. Um, so next I would like to talk about how partons evolve after the hard scattering and um, scale evolution of fragmentation function. So in this particular cartoon here um, represents the initial state hard scattering and the pardon that is produced uh, in the hard scattering, they are highly virtual uh, object and uh, their size is um, uh, small. And as they, they propagate um, uh, in, in vacuum, they undergo these ra uh, radiative splittings and their size uh, becomes small, uh, lo uh, larger and larger. And as their um, off-cellness or the virtuality uh, becomes smaller and smaller um, uh, and reaches say Q square equal to one GeV, uh, the coupling constant is no longer um, perturbative. And um, uh, th this description um, uh, kind of um, uh, stops. Uh, the perturbative description is no longer valid in, in that regime and uh, pardons undergo hedonization. Uh, detailed mechanism of hedonization is still unknown and one model this uh, using a uh, fragmentation function or in terms of Monte Carlo uh, uses Pythia string fragmentation um, to um, generate hadrons from protons. So uh, to uh, discuss the evolution of fragmentation function, um, let me uh, talk about the the light cone coordinate system in which we uh, I'm going to show um, the evolution of fragmentation function. Um, so in Minkowski coordinate, the four four vector is represented using a four uh, following four component, um, and then the off shellness or the virtuality uh, of uh, parton would be given uh, using following uh, expression here, and in in light cone coordinate, the four vector would be represented as plus minus uh, and per component, which would be the X and Y component. Um, the plus component is obtained when you add the, um, the uh, T component with the Z component of the momentum and minus component is obtained when we subtract uh, the Z component um, with the key component. And op shellness is given by Q square, uh, which would be two times Q plus uh, times Q minus, uh, minus Q per, and um, rest mass of the part on. So if the part on is traveling in negative Z direction, that means the perp is uh, essentially zero. Um, the the minus component would be the la, la, uh, largest component compared to the plus component um, because of the flipping of the sign here and third component is zero. So let's first look at this uh, uh, diagram where you have a part on and then it emits a um, collinear gluon. Uh, initially, let's say it has a momentum Q plus, Q minus and zero per and um, it's going in the negative Z direction. So it has um, Q minus as largest component. And <clears throat> let's say this radiated blue on takes a momentum fraction uh, Y minus of the initial parent here. And this part on uh, the quark takes the Y times Q minus um, um, momentum related, uh, relate, uh, relative to the parent here. Uh, then how, how can we write down the uh, other 
component of these momentum in terms of light cone coordinate. So if P minus is Y times Q minus and K minus is uh, one minus Y times Q minus where K is the momentum of the gluon and P is the momentum of this uh, part on after uh, splitting, uh, one can simplify, uh, use these equation uh, that K, uh, K square, which is the momentum of this uh, gluon line here. And this, this line represents the um, cut line, meaning that these partons are on shell. So K square is equal to zero and P square is equal to zero. Um, and Q square would be in this case, two times Q plus Q minus, and that should be equal to the off shellness of the parent parton. Um, so using these, uh, 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 relation one can derive that K plus would be um, this expression here and P plus can be represented in terms of L curve Q minus and momentum fraction Y and Q square, which is the optionalness of the parton would be related to the L curve of um, the radiated gluon uh, in, in this form. So before I move forward, let, uh, let me talk about um, um, a, a theorem called uh, optical theorem that is usually used in evaluating this forward scattering diagram. Um, so this particular diagram uh, uh, is uh, a forward scattering diagram, meaning that um, the final state is uh, represented here by the dotted line. And these two are the in initial state. And the two times the imaginary part of the amplitude of this particular diagram is equal to the product of amplitude of uh, the two diagrams that you get from uh, this cut line here. And this essentially represents the product of the amplitude of this diagram. And you take the complex conjugate of the other piece that you get. And the product of these two would be equal to uh, calculating the amplitude of this process and taking the two times uh, imaginary part. Um, what imaginary part really means is this, uh, this cut line here, meaning that these propagators would be put uh, on shell. Uh, so you have a propagator uh, for quark uh, goes as this. You replace that with a delta function, uh, meaning that you put this uh, on shell and then you calculate the amplitude of this process. So uh, next I would consider um, a single emission uh, diagram um, uh, in, in a forward scattering manner. So you have a final state presented here and this blob here represents the fragmentation function or the fragmentation of this uh, part on after the split and Z is the moment, uh, uh, momentum fraction for the uh, fragmentation um, of this parton into a head con. So if one cal calculates the uh, uh, probability from this diagram, one would get the following expression. It has uh, alpha S and uh, has a integration over L curve, where L curve is the transverse momentum of this radiated uh, gluon. And you have a splitting function Ty where the splitting function essentially means is the probability for uh, this parent quark to radiate a, a gluon with momentum fraction one minus um, y here. And D is the fragmentation function um, for this uh, quark line here. Um, the splitting function uh, for this process is shown here and from this uh, expression, one can see that as y goes to one, um, the denominator becomes zero. And that's, the, uh, that's a, a soft divergence um, uh, in, in, in the expression. So essentially this terms uh, become infinite when y becomes one. Um, so one needs to also account for the virtual diagram that is shown here, where you have a quark that emits a, a gluon and then it absorbed back uh, into, into the quark. 
And one can calculate the probability for this diagram and it would look like a, a following expression that is shown here. Um, and this particular expression has uh, exactly same um, value at y equal to one. So if, if, if you evaluate this expression uh, in, in integral at y equal to one, uh, the, these two uh, expressions are equal, but this comes with the negative sign. So essentially this cancels the uh, soft divergence, uh, which is at um, y equal to one. But there is another divergence in, in, in this integral that comes from um, integration over L curve. Um, so when the L curve becomes uh, zero, um, that, that means that this collinear poly uh, gluon um, has a transverse momentum that is much, much smaller. Um, and if one looks at the formation time, which is two times Q minus uh, or Q square, and one can express it in terms of L curve. So as L curve becomes zero, the, the formation time becomes essentially infinite. And what it means is that the, these emission in, in, in that limit should uh, correspond to a long distance uh, phenomena. It should be, um, and this divergence should be included in, in fragmentation function. Um, so at this point, what one do is uh, split this um, in integration over L curve into two pieces um, and introduce a scale mu square. Uh, and everything below mu square, one absorbs into a, a bare fragmentation function and redefine uh, what we call as a renormalized uh, fragmentation function. Um, so in this, picture here shows the uh, virtuality drop from Q square to mu square, uh, which can happen um, in one emission, two emission, or um, uh, n number of emissions. And one can uh, derive a following expression um, that relates the fragmentation function at scale Q square to uh, fragmentation function at uh, mu square. And each of these terms represents essentially the, uh, the probability here uh, to have a, uh, for instance, this particular piece represents emission uh, of one collinear gluon, and this particular term represents emission of two uh, collinear gluons. Um, and then this, this expression uh, can be turned into a differential equation and is shown here. Um, and essentially this equation is called uh, DGLAP equation, which is a integral uh, uh, differential equation. And solving this equation requires a input fragmentation fun function at a lower uh, scale, mu square, and one can evolve it at a higher scale. And this has been done by uh, Gribov, Lipato, uh, Altrelli, Parisi, and Doc Sizer. Um, in, in, in following years. So, so, so far I talked about how parton um, essentially loses energy in, in, in vacuum. Um, and when, when we are studying heavy ion collision, the, the partons that are produced from the hard scattering, they undergo for blown plasma and they encounter uh, various different scale as they propagate in, in the core blown plasma. And uh, because of this phenomenon, when we call that the jet evolution in uh, core blown plasma is a multi-scale phenomenon. To represent this, I'm showing here a, a picture where uh, this blue arrow represents the hard part on that is produced from hard scattering. Um, and as it is propagating through the plasma, it undergoes these um, radiative um, splitting and as it propagates, um, it exchanges a range of momentum with, with the plasma. And depending on the range of uh, these momentum, it would resolve the forblown plasma at different scale as the part on um, propagates in the medium. And as the medium is, uh, uh, as the part on is propagating, medium is also evolving from high temperature to low temperature um, region. Um, in, in this uh, particular um, diagram, I'm showing here three different 
uh, phases of parton shower in the first phase the parton has uh, high energy and high virtuality and it is mostly radiation dominant with few scattering and then it um, uh, cascade into um, high energy and low virtuality phase where scatterings are dominant um, and as these partons propagate they also uh, um, uh, emit partons that are that have low energy and low virtuality and uh, they are nearly thermal partons um, so so uh, in in these different regions uh, we have a different uh, theoretical framework to understand the the, the processes that happens uh, in high energy high virtuality phase we use higher twist uh, formalism to understand uh, jet energy loss in high energy and low virtuality phase one uses uh, on shell or uh, transport model such as uh, amy uh, bdmps approach um, in low energy and low virtuality phase one uses uh, strong coupling formalism such as ads cft um in in jet evolution there are some uh, few outstanding questions that we would like to understand um, um so some of these um, i'm listing here um the first one is um what is the microscopic structure of gluon plasma and can we extract these uh, quasi particles um distribution of these quasi particles in in the gluon plasma um, and as uh, these partons are propagating in the plasma, they're radiating these um, uh, partons by splitting. Um, one would like to understand how does the, the jet energy thermalizes uh, in, in the plasma and can one recover um, the jet energy as one increases the cone size um, of, the, of the jet. Um, and how does a jet substructure modifies um, by these splittings? Um, and also, uh, we would like to learn the modification of four gluon uh, fractions uh, uh, in heavy ion collision compared to the PP collision, how these uh, things are modified in presence of the plasma. And um, another uh, question is uh, can we? Uh, constrain the energy and temperature dependence of the transport coefficients um, that are responsible uh, for these uh, different mechanisms that are listed here. Um, so since uh, the, the jet evolution is a uh, multi-scale phenomena and it, it, it requires this uh, study of these different regions, one requires a a um, sophisticated uh, and systematic framework to um, study this um, in a comprehensive manner. And Jetscape is one such framework to simulate um, uh, all different aspects of heavy ion collision. And this uh, flowchart here shows the uh, diagrammatic representation of Jetscape framework. Uh, you have initial state uh, geometry module and this uh, blocks in, in the top line represents the heart sector uh, and the blocks in, in, in this bottom uh, represents the soft sector and then we have uh, these communication uh, modules to, um, to get information um, regarding the interaction between jets and um, hydrodynamic medium. And in this uh, session, we would focus on multi-stage uh, jet energy loss uh, formalism. Um, so in Jetscape, so far we have four uh, energy loss modules incorporated um, at high, high virtuality. Um, we have um, matter, uh, which is based on higher twist formalism and essentially um, uh, used um, in, in a region where the radiation is the dominant mechanism of uh, energy loss. Uh, in small virtuality, we have um, um, LBT, Martini, and ADS-CFT. Um, and we have uh, two more talks um, 
uh, uh, will be given um, on one would be given on uh, low low uh, virtuality and high energy phase by Chanu, and then um, there is a talk uh, on medium response to uh, jets by Yasuki Tachibana. So in this talk, I'm going to focus mainly on the high virtuality, high energy phase of the Pagan um, shower. Uh, so far, is there any question or? Um, I think you're fine to continue. Okay. So, um, so I'm showing here a, a a uh, cartoon here which shows that the part on uh, this particular line represents the part on that is produced from heart scattering and as it propagates through the plasma it um, receives these transfer kicks uh, that changes the direction of the, the part on and these transfer kicks not only change the direction of uh, parent part on it changes the off shellness of this part on uh, the parent part on as well and this leads to uh, enhancement in, in the gluon radiation uh, of this uh, part. Um, and these transverse kick essentially broadens the, the jets. And I'm showing here a schematic diagram uh, plot here uh, of differential jet cross section as a function of jet PT in PP and um, in lead lead. Essentially what happens is that uh, one observes is the uh, shift in the spectrum in the, in the left direction, which is essentially due to the momentum broadening these uh, jets. Uh, some of these partons are uh, going out of the jet cone and essentially losing the energy. And that's why the jet PT is reduced um, uh, due to these um, transfer states. Um, to quantify these, uh, the, the part on energy loss, um, we have several uh, transport coefficient and listing here uh, transport coefficient Q hat, E hat, and E2 hat. Uh, Q hat essentially measures the uh, average transverse momentum squared uh, per unit length um, shown here. Uh, and E hat essentially rep uh, represents the uh, change uh, average change in longitudinal momentum uh, per unit length. And E2 hat represents the average of uh, square of change in longitudinal momentum uh, per unit length. Um, essentially, these two transport coefficient, they correspond to the change in uh, longitudinal momentum, whereas Q hat is um, about change in the transverse momentum. Um, in, in, in this talk, I'll, I'll focus on uh, Q hat because uh, Q hat is the most dominant uh, 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 transport coefficient that leads to the momentum broadening of the jet. Um, uh, next, I would show the effect of uh, transport coefficient Q hat on the final state observable. And here I'm showing a nuclear modification factor RAA for final state charged particle. Uh, and this is the PT or the transverse momentum of final state um, hadrons um, from jet collaboration. And this calculation is done within the higher twist energy loss uh, for malism, um, where the Q hat is parametrized based on the in local entropy density of the medium. And Q hat not is a three parameter that uh, one can vary um, and determine from fits uh, of, uh, to the experimental data. So here one can see that as one, uh, this top line, top curve uh, represents uh, uh, Q at not equal to 2.5. And as one increases this uh, three parameter, one can see there is a suppression um, in, in, in the, uh, in, in the final uh, spectrum. So this essentially <clears throat> means that uh, as one increases Q hat, uh, Q, Q hat naught, this increases the, the transverse momentum broadening of these, uh, the leading part on. And this, uh, that essentially leads to the uh, reduction, further reduction in, in the nuclear modification factor. 
um this quantity has been also extracted in um, um in within jetscape collaboration using a bayesian uh, and multi stage approach and i'm showing here um if you had over t cube which is a dimensionless quantity as a function of temperature um and uh, these plots here represents the fits um to the experimental data um and one has uh, these are uh, charge hadron array at rick uh, at central most central collision and uh, semi peripheral uh, collisions so let me uh, go to uh, part on energy loss in high twist um, formalism i'm showing here a one uh, uh, leading order diagram where the parton goes and exchanges a gluon with with the medium and then it um, becomes on shell here um so the part on uh, this this quark line here ha it has a largest component q minus um and its off shellness is mu square so the q plus can be written as mu square divided by q q minus and uh, let's say q minus is the hard scale uh, represented by capital q and lambda is a parameter that is much smaller than 1 then one can derive um that these uh, gluons uh, would have the per component as the um, um largest component com compared to the plus and minus component do that um, uh, in this forward scattering diagram this particular quark line is on shell um so l square is equal to 0 which can be written as 2 times l plus l minus uh, minus l per then one can simplify this uh, and write k plus to be um have following expression um since q minus is the hard scale uh, which goes as q and if let's say k per is of the order of lambda q then the k plus would be um lambda square uh, times q so the k plus would be uh, much smaller than the k per component and similarly we can uh, obtain k minus uh, component so essentially in uh, um uh the interaction with with the medium the these gluons uh, that are exchanged are transverse gluon um in next diagram uh, in energy loss one encounters is uh, you have one emission and there is a scattering uh, with the plasma and uh, at at this uh, order uh, one has to consider different cut lines um and i'm showing in in next slide uh there are several diagrams uh, uh still each of these diagram have single scattering and single emission only the thing uh, that changes is the, the cut line that uh, where you evaluate these diagrams uh and that essentially forms the single scattering and single emission uh, kernel um and within the uh virtuality ordered emission approximation one can um uh, repeat this uh, single emission single scattering kernel to arrive at a medium modified um, degelap evolution for a fragmentation function and the equation is shown uh, in here where the blue part represents the pure vacuum term and the red uh, part represents the uh, medium Term. uh and this medium term here has a length integration over a uh, transport coefficient q hat that depends on the uh, property of the 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 leading part on and the uh, local property of the medium so here uh, the vacuum contributions uh, are dominant and medium induced radiation are treated as uh, corrections uh so next i would like to talk about uh, monte carlo implementation um how we go from the glab to a uh, sudakov factor so um to do this um one defines a 
a pseudocop factor which essentially represents a uh, prob um, a, a probability to uh, cascade a part on at virtuality mu square one who um, mu square uh, two via unresolvable uh, emission. Um, so this probability one can um, it can factor out if uh, this happens in uh, via a another intermediate scale mu three then one can write down this probability as a product. Um, so uh, for a very small range uh, of virtuality drop, let's say delta mu square, um, the Sudakov factor uh, S, uh, which essentially represents the probability of no emission going from mu square to uh, mu square plus delta mu square can be represented as um, one minus probability of one emission. Since I'm con considering this infinite decimal change, only the one probability for one emission should be dominant um, anyway. And this particular uh, term here represents the probability for one emission uh, or one medium induced uh, emission. So here PY includes the uh, vacuum splitting function as well as corrections to form the medium. And uh, P medium is shown here uh, and it, it, it has a vacuum splitting function and times the um, uh, in, in, integral or uh, length integration or Q, Q hat. Um, so one can use this following expression to derive uh, what would be the Sudakov factor to go from a arbitrary uh, scale um, um, mu naught square uh, to a, a much higher scale Q square. Mm -hmm. So to do that, uh, we define, uh, we can define a differential of a Sudakov factor um, as following expression. And then one can uh, use this equation that is shown here um, and write down um, the difference in, in, in the following form here. Um, and in, in this quantity, uh, mainly depend on mu square. Uh, one can take this uh, take this s um, um, on the other side um, and then perform the integration on both sides. Once one does that, one can, one arrives at a Sudakov factor um, s to have um, virtuality drop from q square to mu naught square, which is essentially an exponential um, of following term. Uh, which has a splitting function and integration over mu square. So uh, this Sudakov factor is used uh, to sample um, the uh, medium modified splitting uh, in presence of medium or uh, just the vacuum splittings uh, in absence of medium. So next I would uh, talk about how to um, sample the Sudakov factor. Um, so essentially, first we generate uh, partons from PTA heart scattering, and uh, initially the heart parton is uh, uh, at location uh, R, and it has uh, some four momentum Q Q mu. Um, and in the Sudakov factor, uh, one needs to know what is the maximum allowed virtuality of the parton. Um, so that. Uh, initially is set by the hard scale of the process that generates uh, the hard part on itself, uh, which is the capital Q square. And essentially the goal is to, um, to identify the momentum of the daughter one and daughter two that are represented here by L and T using this Sudakov uh, sampling procedure. So to determine this, um, so our Sudakov factor S has this following form, uh, where uh, in this particular ex expression, the mu square max is uh, initially set to be a capital Q square, um, which is the hard scale of the process uh, that produced the hard part on. And Y min is, uh, represents the um, smallest value of 
the moment of fraction y that is set by the uh, q naught square divided by the mu square where q naught is the uh, smallest word quality um, that that we will use uh, for the DGLAB uh, evolution and it is set um, in the calculation to one GEV. Since we have about five minutes left. Okay, thanks. Um, and essentially this Sudakov uh, represents the probability of no resolvable splits between virtuality uh, mu square max uh, and mu square. And one can uh, uh, look at this expression and make a, make a plot um, uh, of this Sudakov as a function of mu square. So when the mu square uh, mu square is equal to uh, mu square max, this expression essentially goes back to one. The pseudocob becomes one, and at the lowest possible virtuality q naught, the pseudocob will uh, pseudocob factor will have, have some number here. Um, now, in order to uh, sample pseudocob, one generates um, random number um, uh, uh, represented by r here between zero and one. And if the random number r is smaller than this uh, point here, which is essentially the lowest possible value of uh, s, uh, if this random number is smaller than um, the lowest possible value of uh, Sudokov, there is a no splitting um, uh, uh, happens. And the virtuality of the part on would be set to the lowest virtuality, which is q naught uh, square, and then the part on would uh, propagate freely to uh, next energy loss routine. Um, if the random number generated uh, is in between uh, this line here and one, uh, then the virtuality uh, of this part on can be in between uh, mu square max and q naught square, and um, it, it is determined by following expression here, which is essentially if the random number that we generated lies here, essentially solving this curve and trying to find what mu square that it, uh, it corresponds to. So uh, now you know, now we know the mu square of the, the parent part on, and in order to uh, know the uh, split, one, one can sample the the splitting function, um, uh, splitting function Py and determine uh, the moment of fraction Y for, for this. So once you know this, uh, the momentum fraction Y, the momentum of um, daughter one uh, in, in, in the minus uh, light cone direction would be Y times Q minus and daughter two would be um, one minus y uh, times q minus. Um, and next, uh, we would like to know the virtuality of daughter one and daughter two. And uh, to do that, um, we again should uh, sample Sudakov uh, factor, um, where the maximum virtuality of the daughter one would be used as one minus y square times mu square um, and daughter two would be uh, y times mu square. Uh, once the virtuality of daughter one and daughter two are known, um, we, we can determine the uh, transverse momentum uh, of the split by following relation. Um, since at this point we know uh, mu square one, mu square, uh, mu two square and y, uh, uh, and we now know the L curve square, we can go ahead and calculate the plus component of daughter one and daughter two. And this process is repeated until uh, the, the part on reaches the minimum virtuality, which is Q naught square. Um, another uh, um, uh, aspect uh, in, in this calculation is to determine the location of, of the split. And location of the split is, uh, uh, calculated by sampling a Gaussian distribution that is shown here. 
um, essentially one uses a uncertainty principle to determine the, uh, the formation time uh, here, which is two times Q minus divided by the optionalness, which is mu square. Uh, and this tau F essentially represents the width of uh, this Gaussian function. And one can sample this function to determine the location uh, in, in the light cone direction and the C minus. Um, and um, uh, this is the distance where this, the, the split would happen. So essentially, uh, I, this is the last slide and uh, I would like to summarize uh, my talk. So essentially I have reviewed uh, jet energy loss in high virtuality phase of the part and shower. Uh, I talked about uh, factorization of soft and hard scale and uh, scale dependence of uh, hard on distribution function and fragmentation function and how to set up the vacuum deglap and medium modified deglap evolution equation. And also how um, to implement them in, in Monte Carlo uh, event generator. So next talk in, in our uh, jet session, um, uh, we have Chanu Park who will talk about uh, jet energy loss in low virtuality phase. Uh, and then we have Yasuki Tachibana who will talk about uh, weakly coupled uh, and strongly coupled approach of medium uh, response. So uh, before that, I would like to take questions if there are um, in, in Slack or so. Uh, very good. Uh, thank you, Amit. Uh, that was a very nice talk. Uh, I saw one hand, but it disappeared. Um, if you'd still like to ask your question, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hello. Hi. Uh, thanks for this very nice talk. I am uh, I'm new to this area. So I had a basic question, like you define different energy loss observables, like Q hat and E hat. Uh, do they have any significance in terms of the processes uh, they correspond to, like the radiation or uh, collisions? Do they correspond to different processes or uh, they are all affected by uh, all the mechanisms? So Q hat mainly uh, characterizes the transverse momentum broadening, right? Um, so I think I showed it from here. So, right. So uh, Q hat essentially uh, is uh, characterizing uh, the transverse broadening of this uh, part on that is propagating through the plasma. Um, so uh, from these transverse kicks over a length, let's say L, how much uh, uh, average transverse momentum it would acquire. Um, and these essentially are uh, scattering processes, right? Um, but in, in Q hat, you not only have scattering uh, processes, you could in, in you would also include these medium induced uh, radiative uh, uh, corrections as well. So both of these processes should be included in, in, in Q hat uh, transport coefficient. Okay, thank you. And and can you uh, please comment on uh, the processes uh, uh, mapped out by E hat? Um, so in E hat, uh, E hat and E two hat, these essentially are um, uh, these essentially characterizing the how much uh, longitudinal momentum uh, is is changing due to these uh, uh, due to these uh, scattering or uh, also these uh, radiative splittings, right? So okay. it's uh, just a different component of, uh, that you are characterizing by, uh, by Q hat, E hat, and E2 hat. Okay, thanks a lot. And one more question uh, in, in the Monte Carlo, uh, you had defined uh, a minimum virtuality that is Q naught. Yes. So, how do we know, uh, like, uh, how do we set that Q naught? So, Q naught uh, basically uh, 
chosen to be one GEV because uh, it, it is a appropriate scale to separate the perturbative uh, and non-perturbative description um, um, in, 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 um, in this uh, calculation. So, so I mean, it, it, it really uh, boils down to if the Q naught square, you want to take it below one, then uh, the coupling, the strong coupling constant also, it, it rises as the Q naught is getting smaller and smaller, right? And um, uh, the description is no longer uh, perturbative. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I, I didn't want to interrupt. Yeah, sorry. Thanks for the answer. Yeah, no problem. Okay, I see another question uh, from Yuki. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, I was just wondering um, like, what you meant by resolvable and unresolvable when you like, first introduced the Sudakov that factor. Uh, resolve uh, resolvable means that you can uh, you can sep you can identify these daughter one and daughter two as a separate uh, object. Uh, uh, okay, so if there are so if it is not no re not resolvable means uh, uh, this is highly collinear uh, the daughter one and daughter two and um, Below, uh, like uh, perturbative scale, basically. Okay, I see. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I don't see any more questions, uh, at least pressing questions right now. Um, so I think we'll we'll transition from here. Uh, thank you very much, Amit, uh, for thank this you. very nice talk. Uh, let me.